go. Hey guys, G Town, what's going on? Stump, Kamesh, best day of the year. How you feeling? <laughs> Dude, it was a blast. A slight disappointment, perhaps. A six man, a six man a draft party isn't quite the same thing as a nine or ten man draft party. But a couple FaceTimers, and we got everybody logged in there. So, you know, not epic proportions, but I guess it, it scratched the itch. Beautiful. Do you think uh, next year, we, is it a non-negotiable? You must be present for the draft or you're out? <laughs> Look, the commission throws dates out a month in advance, and we, I, I think we need a little more effort from the back end of the roster, making sure I'm getting some communication so I don't find out a week before that people are bailing. Okay, you know who you are. We need a 10 man is what we're saying here. <laughs> and I'll own my part. I could have gotten a car and drove six hours today. That's <laughs> me. It was, it was so rough, man. I was as late as last night at 10, I was texting with my pilot. And he was, we were, we were walking through different strategies. And I was like, this guy's 70 years old. Like, I don't know if that's who I want flying me through fog and smoke. But I was calculating the risk. So, all right, let's also, do Real quick, I just want to say, we got between a – the hood to coast and then the labor day weekend it's hard to actually get everybody together i get that so don't feel too bad but feel okay, a little bit of grace from the commission you, so those of us that miss there's a little bit of grace for you just a little so hey what we're going to do is we're going to take each roster we're going to break it down three ways and there's going to be a minute on the clock for each team we're going to do three things number one uh best value pick so we'll go through and say here's what the picks that we think were great uh, we're going to rip on each guy a little bit, worst value pick. And then real quick, rapid fire, we're going to give our best guess at records. Now, uh, just league historian, I want you to know, we did not think about this. So don't add everything up and say, it's impossible mathematically for those. We know, we're just making stuff up. So uh, we're going to start with uh, the Stiz Hawks. And uh, best value pick, Stomp, what do, you, what do you think is your best value there? And, by the way, this excludes keepers. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with – honestly, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. I'm going to be bold right there. That dude finished seventh last year in our league at receiver. Uh, I think he's going to get more touches this year. Maybe not match the touchdown output, but I think the yards and catches are going to go up. And I think he's got some low-end wide receiver one value for 21 bucks. That's exactly who I was looking at. So we're on the same page. Uh, worst value pick. Now, I, I love this guy and I wanted him. But I think Kareem Hunt at 47, that just feels – that feels high to me. I don't think it's a bad value. Agree. It's just not great value. No, I, I agree. I, well, I was going – I was bidding on Fournette because I was thinking Hunt would go for like in the mid-upper 30s. And I let Fournette go when it got up to like 45, and then I kind of committed myself to Hunt. That's the danger of the auction. I got committed, needed to get that RB2, and Hunt was the one I thought would, would be the best left. So I get it. I, I followed you up there to the mid-40s. So. <laughs> yeah, you're the reason he cost me 47. All right. Uh, record, looking at it on paper, what's your guess for your record? I'll go uh, – I don't even remember how many games we play in the regular season. 14 maybe? I'll go 8 and 6. Thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah. Seven and six. Eight and five. All Come right. Board. Next team. Bosby, the champ. What do you what do you see there? Ah, uh, this is all spur of the moment, guys. So best value pick. I already know mine. I was stoked to get Kelvin Benjamin at seven. Seven bucks for Benjamin. He's a guy that I don't love, but honestly, that could be a wide receiver too. That's not out of the question. It's at least a solid third receiver for seven bucks. That's a great value. Yeah, I was I was excited about that. So, uh, worst value pick. Still looking. Probably fifteen bucks for Chris Hogan, even though I like Chris Hogan. <laughs> you and me have the same guys targeted. <laughs> we we bet each other up on a lot of stuff, man. I was hoping to get him for about eight or nine. So yeah, I could see him stealing some of that Edelman role. Yep, that's that's my hope. So, is he playable? Probably not, but I'm glad I have him. Yeah, yeah. Record on paper? Oh, boy, this one's got some X factors. 
if we're if, if if luck is back within say two or three games, then I'll give you eight and five. If luck is out for six or more, I'm going to give you six and seven. I'm saying seven and six. Put it on the board. All right, Big Daddy. We're not allowed to use keepers. Is that what you said? <laughs> uh, oh man! Shoot. Wow. I'm going to go with. Uh, <laughs> I love looking at this one. I love that there was thirty-four dollars spent on Eddie Lacy, Thomas Rawls, and the Seahawks defense. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't even include C.J. Anderson. Wow. Give me uh, Lacey for 10. I'll take that as the worst. That's by far the worst. That's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible, Dad. That's so bad. Okay, best value pick. Okay, we're done with that segment. <laughs> uh, I'll go uh, Pierre Garçon for four. Eh. He has a couple decent ones. Car for a buck or Deshaun Jackson for a buck or solid two? Same with Kenny Britt for a buck. Deshaun for a buck. Let's do that. Yep. Record on paper. Um, three and ten. Four and nine. Put it on the board. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're uh, Polly, I got to say before we start the clock for Polly, I've already sent him two trades today, and he denied both of them. He's engaged. I'm – I even – the first trade was a, was a joke. I mean, I thought there's no way he's going to take it. But he responded both on the app and text. Whoa. This is great. I'm so stoked. Keep, keep – I almost want to give him a positive name. Yeah, keep rejecting my trades, Paul. This is awesome. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Value pick. Paul. Looking this thing over. The one that keeps popping out to me that I thought, crap, I, I, I stopped too soon was Jordan Reed for 18. Okay. Honestly, I, I, I like Polly's team as one of the top couple teams. But there's nothing here that makes me go, wow, that's a great steal necessarily. I mean, Julio for 10 bucks cheaper than last year or 11 or 12. I mean, I think he was like 72 maybe last year. 61. Can't complain, but that's about that was still one of the highest. Yeah, it comes down to the Zeke suspension because sixty-one could be a steal. That's true. Okay, worst pick. Um, again, uh, Macklin for four. I mean, I, his worst pick was actually a one-dollar guy, Jeremy Langford. Terrible. That's not. Yeah, is he even still? The backup or the star? He <laughs> got cut today. I was going to say, I think Cohen was uh, the guy yeah. to get there. Yeah, so I'm going to say that's his worst p value pick. That's probably true. Record on paper, eight and five. I'm going to go nine and four. Holy. All right, we're I two. like that starting lineup, man. If, if Z avoids suspension. I agree. All right, we're to the G money. I don't think it's going to be the luckless chumps, dude. I'm telling you, I made mean, on the bold prediction a vlog or two ago, I picked G for the playoffs. This is a solid squad right here. Best value, I think it's a $2 guy, Duke Johnson Jr. Okay. I actually like that a lot. I like that. Yep. I'm looking at I, – I think Des for 33. I don't, I'm not sure he's that far off the – well, and prior for 26. Both those guys are kind of in that tier right below the elite. And for like half the price. Yeah, those are pretty good. I, I like that. All right, worst pick. Um, I like the player, but I don't like the role. So I'd say Derek Henry for 18. 18 is expensive. That was my fault. Sorry, G. I really wanted Henry. And I needed another back. So I just kept bidding because I had money left over. This is a, it's an interesting squad because Breeze gives you so much value at, at quarterback. What's going to happen with Adrian Peterson, Moffat? Um, not much. He's going to be fine. Okay. Okay, I don't know what to do with him. Six to eight hundred yards and six scores. Never playable. Okay. All right. Yeah. So he's going to need Paul Perkins to step up. Yep. Totally. So, All right, Schwab. Seven and six for Gentry regular season. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll right around five hundred. I'll go seven and six too. All right, Schwab. Um, 
Best value. There's two I like here, and neither of them were cheap. But I, I'm going to go with Michael Thomas. You I think he's Thomas, right, huh? right in that elite group, I think, and he went for only 44. I, I think he's sniffing the, the studs, and he was cheaper than any of them. Okay. I, I, I'm down with that. Worst pick, I'm going to say Devontae Adams. No questions asked. 20 bucks. Okay. What makes you say that? Um, he was pretty touchdown dependent. That's had, very true. Had a lot of drops. And I think Cobb is going to get his roll back a little bit. I know you hate Cobb. Cobb I, I, Rogers just he, – he throws it to who's open. So, it doesn't yeah. matter who's out there. So, he can have – Who's our fourth string guy, the white guy? Um, Jeff Janice? Yeah, Janice is pretty good in that offense. So, I don't know. I mean, he's 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 a decent receiver, but I just – it's just not the right – the sweet spot, I don't think. Or if he doesn't get those 12 touchdowns, then, yeah, yeah he's going to drop back down to earth. Yeah. He dropped, Schwab. he dropped a few TDs as well, so. Yep. Schwab, eight, hands. eight and five. So Okay, I'll go. I'll ooh, I'll go eight and five too. Calm, I can see a nine and four. I like Schwab starters. All right, Coog. Coog. <laughs> Coog's team is so interesting. It is. His top four that he spent on were all receivers, which is kind of funny because he got three studs, and then the next highest is Jameson Crowder, who I like. Thirteen is not bad. Fat Bob, Robert Kelly for 12. Best Outside of that, I can't pick too much. Best value, I'm going to say, actually, and it's dependent on his roster, but I think Kelly at 12 is the most important piece because now he actually has an RB2 that's going to play. Things are getting choppy for me. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. I was just saying, Bob Kelly, it's it's probably his best value because it's an RB2 that will actually play. I can't even hear you. All right. Sorry about that. We're back on here. Um, so we're talking Coog squad, best value. Um, yeah, there's a few guys. Worst value. Let's hit that. I don't hate any value on here, dude. I don't either. Record, six and seven. Six and seven. Seven and, I'll go seven and six. Woodcocks, best value pick. I love the A.J. Green. I think he's going to have a monster year, 47. Yeah, I like – I just like how much – Depth. He has a lot of guys that play on his team that actually exactly. get minutes. This is the one that was a conundrum for me because he he has like five, six backs and receivers that are potentially startable. There's AJ's the only one I like though. <laughs> yeah, AJ at 47, best pick. Worst pick, I'm gonna say with authority, Lamar Miller. He's trash. I don't love Lamar. No. I'm not excited about Lamar. Ingram kind of scares me. Terrence West. None of the guys excite me. Crabtree's fine, but he doesn't have elite upside. Montgomery could be pretty good. Woodhead for five is nice. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders for 10, nice and startable. And then he just doesn't – there's no makeup factor with Phillip Rivers where if Lamar Miller goes for 38 carries and gets you 118 fantasy points – <laughs> Your quarterback's not going to drop 500 very often, so. Right. Limited upside. I'm going like. to say Wood, five and eight. I'll go six and seven. All right. Arm healer, best value. Um, I'll say Adam Thielen for a dollar. I was looking at him and Golden Tate for 14. I like both of those. Yeah, Tate for 14 is good, too. Yeah. I, thought, I thought Tate was a little overrated on lists coming into this thing. I thought he and Marvin Jones are going to actually end up pretty close. But for 14 bucks, he, he's not going for, like, 26 or anything like that. So that's pretty solid, too. All right, worst value. 
I'm going to say Carlos Hyde for 38. And my rationale is I think some really good guys were going for cheaper or right around the same price. I, I had Dalvin Cook way ahead of Carlos Hyde. I got him for seven bucks cheaper. Yeah. Chris, I, Christian McCaffrey, I mean, Fournette went for what, 44? 45. So. Yeah, that the the Gronk for forty eight feels pretty bold again. <laughs> uh, you can at least get that. I mean, yeah, the both right. are pretty rough though. He's got a lot of risk, but if he actually stays healthy, he he's definitely gonna be worth forty eight. McCoy at sixty five. I think that might have been the most expensive guy in the draft. I was on for twenty. I hate too. Yeah, I don't hate that. I don't. I just, I've never been an Alshon guy, man. Yeah. And still, that's not that much for the potential upside. All right, record. Um, six and seven. Four and nine. Ooh. Some healer hate. Verge. I just I got to stay with my my healer hate. That's, <laughs> that's my thing right. here, man. All right, Verge. Verge, I felt like was really close to having an awesome team, and there I, I felt like a few misses. What were his misses? Um. I don't I, – Carson Palmer and Eli is your two QBs. Yeah. I don't love that. I mean, Carson might have a bounce back year. I just – for a dollar, you could add Derek Carr. I mean, he he'd spent $2 on – he spent $5 on two different defenses, and that could have been Jameis Winston and Kirk Cousins, and I would have felt a lot better about his team looking at it on paper. Yeah. Yep. And then he's a running back short. <laughs> I think he drafted all the rookie running backs. Joe Williams, which was awesome because he went on IR today. Uh, Marlon Mack, Chris Carson, he had a three on his bench. And then Joe Mixon on top of that. Anyway, um, if, if luck comes back, T.Y. Hilton at 28 is going to look nice. If luck misses four or five games, T.Y. could suffer. Yeah, I, that's a really good value with that guy's stats the last few years, man. Holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, he's had elite level stats. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. So that's good. That's best value. Worst value on his thing. I'm going to say this is going to hurt a little bit, but Joe Mixon, whom I love, but he's in a three headed monster, and that's, that's not changing anytime soon. That's going to be what Burgess' team hangs on because he doesn't have any backs that he can pop in there after David Johnson. It's just Mixon and it might – I mean, if it takes Mixon six or eight weeks to take that starting job, that could be a rough go for a while. Yeah. With that in mind, I'm saying five and eight. I'll go six and seven. David Johnson's still there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. DJ can single-handedly win some weeks. I like Mark Tavis, too. Jimmy Graham, I think, has a good year. Jordy, there's some, there's some nice pieces there. Now, here's the, here's the real recap of the, the draft. Every year our league gets better, and this year is no exception. It's actually, like, hard. It's great. Uh, this is the second year in a row, I feel like, where I look at them, and I, I definitely don't hate any teams. Big Daddy would be my low, my low end, but there's a lot of squads that I'm like, ooh, that, if you just look at their starters, that's going to be a tough matchup right there. I agree. I love that. Before we sign off on this edition, let's, let's just break down the rookie running backs in terms of fantasy. Uh, I'll read off a few names. Let's put them in order. How do we think they'll finish? Uh, Fournette, McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt, Joe Mixon. Everyone would say those are the top five guys. How will they finish in uh, fantasy points this year? So you want to start at the bottom or the top? Start at the bottom, baby. Okay, my number five for this year, and only in fantasy, not in real football, Joe Mixon. I agree. Okay. Number four. This is a close one. Four and three are close for me. So you're splitting hairs. I'll say four is Dalvin Cook and then McCaffrey three. But I could see that flipping around. Totally. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'll go Kareem Hunt two and Fournette one. I had have, I have Hunt as my number one. With the okay. Which I, I could just, see that too. I watched a lot of his highlights this morning, and I was like, this guy's – he's filthy. But Fournette is – he is built like AP. I mean, he could have that kind of – Fournette's a freak, dude. Yeah. But I actually – Hunt was a guy I wanted the Seahawks to draft potentially. So I, I had watched some of his games last year. 
Pro Football Focus had him as their number one back in college last year. He's their top on their draft board. I was, so he's, he's not some scrub who's just getting an opportunity. He's a true stud. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's a good class, dude, of rookie yeah. running backs, big yeah. time. <laughs> this class of running backs. Um, and then just a couple of quick – give us a couple, you know, random guys that you saw that you wanted to, to get today, some deep sleepers that you were bummed you didn't get. Just give us some random names. Um, I really wanted Chris Carson, actually. Yeah, me too. Birds got him for seven. I think I was thinking more for next year, fantasy wise. Uh, but that dude has a chance to even be a factor this year, which would you know, that could turn a season right there. Yeah, he was the first one that jumps out at me. There's a lot of guys where I felt it just takes two people really liking the same dude, and all of a sudden, Martavis is going for 28 or. Yeah. Uh, I had to back out of Derrick Henry and Abdullah. You got Abdullah. I like Amir Abdullah this year. The one guy I was stoked to get on my bench for two bucks was Corey Coleman. Uh, some nice upside there. I mean, that could be potentially be a $2 keeper, right? Could be. He gets the right. I mean, who knows if Deshaun Kaiser is any good? We're about to find out. So. Yeah. My favorite part of the draft today was when I screwed Schwab on his, on his plug-and-play defense. <laughs> you didn't even know it, did you? Know? Did you did you take the – wait, who did you take? I took Kansas City as my real D, but I didn't want to play him against New England week one. So I was uh-huh. like, who's my plug and play? And I saw – I thought, I'm going to see who Schwab nominates for a buck because that's who he wants. And I don't even care who it is. I'm taking him. <laughs> 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 who was it? It's uh, Buffalo against the Jets. That's right. Okay, so you <laughs> screwed him on that. So then he nominated the Steelers against Cleveland and yeah. quit paying attention because he thought he had it. So, it, But Verge stole the Steelers on his bench. So then Schwab's turn comes up his last pick, and he's having a hard time figuring out like how to get a nominee in there. And so the computer did it for him, and then it threw out Carolina. He was like, why is it throwing out a defense? And then that, that's when he finally realized that he hadn't gotten either of the Ds that he put out there. <laughs> so good. It was classic. <laughs> All right. Any concluding thoughts? Dudes, that was some really good drafting. I think this is going to be a fun year. Uh, we, we've changed up the schedule so that uh, I don't have to play Schwab out of the gate and Wood and Healer. That's been like 10 years in a row where we've had to battle the same guy. So it's me against Wood. And unfortunately, they, couldn't, they wouldn't let me reset to like the default schedule. So once I did that, it set off a chain reaction of chaos. And I think at some point in there, Gentry and Wood maybe play each other two weeks in a row or something like that. But nobody plays anybody else more than twice, and I think we got it squared away. So, anyway, be ready for a goopy schedule. And this sucker starts Thursday night with my whole roster, the Kansas City Chiefs, maybe. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. Rock and roll. Best of luck. And may the best man win. <laughs> See you, G-Town. <laughs>